Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this audit meeting on a usually very wet September morning. Do we have any apologies? Uh, no convener, no apologies. Are there any declarations of interest? No. OK. Moving to the last minutes. Um, are we all agreed or is there any concerns? Happy to agree, convener. Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. Then progress to the audit progress report then, please. Thank you. Isabel. Uh, thank you, convener. Good morning, everybody. The purpose of the report is to provide an update on where we are with completing our 22-23 and our 23-24 internal audit plans. At the June audit committee, I reported that there were four 22-23 reviews still in progress. Paragraphs 3.1 and 3.2 set out the details of those four reviews, with details on the scope and the findings found at Appendix 1. The 23-24 internal audit plan was agreed at the April Audit Committee. Paragraph 3.3 3 highlights that one assignment is at draft report stage and four are in progress. Appendix 3 provides a summary of progress with the 23-24 inter internal audit plan in its entirety. As members know, on a quarterly basis, internal audit identify what look like duplicate creditor payments we then investigate these results to confirm if they are overpayments. The last quarter results from April to June 23 can be seen at paragraph 3.5. I'd ask members to note the recommendations and the conclusions. That is that the team are making reasonable progress with completing the 23-24 internal audit work. If you've got any questions, I'm happy to try and answer. Thank you. Councillor Michael John. Thank you, and thank you to, to Isabel and, and the team for um, their, their work. Um, it's good to see that we're managing to catch up um, as well. But I, I'd quite like to ask um, the director about the uh, Legionella management arrangements. Um, I, I was very aware um, as we were coming out of COVID um, that um, Legionella and the testing regime um, became an issue, not just for, for Falkirk Council, across the district, across the, the country um, then. And um, we did a lot of work to review our practices and processes at this time. So I'm a wee bit surprised that to have no assurance, um, a little bit disappointed. Um, and wanted to ask um, the, the, the director a wee bit about why we have a number of buildings either failing around the checking, um, in the cases where we're not planning the preventative maintenance, um, temperatures are, are also um, not being checked, and to, to how we've got to this position when I, I really had felt that we did have um, a review at that time and a, a fairly robust regime um, in place and um, want to know why it's, that's not we've got to the, where we are. Um, but also, what are we going to do to, to make sure that we have a clear action plan um, that will bring us back onto track and, and be able to give the assurance um, that, that certainly all elected members would want um, across the piece in relation to all our buildings. Um, so I'll just maybe start with that just now, um, convener, if that's okay. Welcome. Uh, through you, convener. Uh, just to say, um, sorry, I think there's an echo. Uh, we, we take the uh, findings of the report really seriously. Uh, clearly, this isn't where we want Falkirk Council to be. Um, I'm sorry that we're in that situation, but um, I'm reassured that um, Paul Ketrick and colleagues from right across the council have put in place a um, significant range of actions. And I think it would be best if I, with your indulgence, was able to pass over to Paul so he could give us uh, a good overview on that action plan um, and give you that reassurance that we're on the right journey to get this fixed and fixed quickly. Thank you, Malcolm. If you could do that, Paul, please. 
Thank you, convener. The um, to, to answer the first part of the question in terms of where I think the feelings have been, I've picked this up in June and read the read the audit report, and I think it is down to to two main two main activities. One is is having the, the the single comprehensive framework for the management of not only Legionella but all all statutory compliance with a dedicated um, board or working group to to. To, to oversee all the activities. There is many different moving parts across many services, ranging from responsible persons, facilities managers, caretakers, all with a role and a responsibility in managing, you know, Legionella and wider wider compliance or water quality as opposed to just uh, Legionella. What what we've agreed uh, from June, having read read the report. Um, is is that we will establish that comprehensive framework, uh, where there will be a, a property compliance working group, and uh, that will be overseen um, by a dedicated board, um, and that will be chaired by myself. There will be a centralised team created within Place Services as part of our corporate landlord, and within that there will be a person who is dedicated to water, uh, water quality. One of the key areas. Um, that we need need a lot of action on is the responsible persons is identified for each and every operational property, and that that seems to be something that, uh, that that's an immediate action, and that those persons in the buildings know their responsibilities, are well aware of the requirements of the premises management handbook, and if they don't, they are trained to to ensure that they have that in place. And there needs to be, when there is issues identified, there needs to be a, a comprehensive um, recording of those with clear actions and timescales for completion with those who are responsible reporting back on their progress. Um, because that's the only way to ensure that when items are identified that they are then progress through to completion. And I think that that's because there's been many different people involved, that that's where it has, uh, has fallen down because People have maybe done individual parts and it hasn't been recorded and hasn't been taken over. Um, and the other thing is, is that we need to ensure finally that where those works are uh, undertaken or uh, identified to deal with mitigate risks is that they're actually recorded as being complete as opposed to being remaining outstanding and a lack of clarity as to whether that has been done. So I hope committee can take assurance that, you know, having picked this up, um, you know, there is a comprehensive programme of actions there. Um, I think we're something like 21 individual recommendations coming out of the out of the audit. Every single one has been accepted. Every single one has got a designated person responsible for, for undertaking those. And the timetable for the, the, the latest one being completed, which are the, the lower level ones, is the end of the calendar year. So hopefully you can take a, a, a bit of assurance that um, we hopefully we don't have this situation arising again and we'll be moving to, to, to full assurance uh, in the future pretty quickly. Convener, thank you um, for, for that, Paul and um, Malcolm. Um, it may be a, appropriate, but I'll take the convener's advice on whether or not we could have a report back to the next audit committee around the action plan and progress of that. Um, and a question to Isabel as to whether or not a follow-up audit would be taking place um, and the timescale for that so that we can actually have the assurance about that progress. Thank you, Lakao Sumiso John. Isabel, could question? Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. Because it's a no assurance report, we would be looking to do more follow up uh, generally. You know that we've spoke about it previously and that twice a year I bring the outstanding recommendations to this committee. So that will happen anyway. If, re if recommendations are going past their due dates, then they will come at this committee as being overdue. But also I think it does warrant a further follow up review, another audit. And I would look to be putting that in next year's programme. So somewhere around 24 and the 24, 25 programme would be a full audit again to check exactly who it was. Thank you, Isabel. Um, as a lead auditor and qualified Legionella certificated person myself, would it be possible for the committee to get a copy of the recommendations and the action plan, please? Uh, 
<clears throat> so I think, Convener, just, just to clarify, I think Councillor Miko John was suggesting that the committee get a report back to the next meeting on yeah. the progress. So that report would have, I think from what Paul said, the 21 recommendations and the actions against them. So that would come as part of the next report if the committee agrees to request that. Thank you for that. Councillor Hanna. Uh, I would just echo the things that have already been said and say I think it is really important that in a very short space of time, like to the next meeting, we have a report including the action plan, the recommendations. Um, obviously, until such time as action has been taken, it's not possible for Isabel to do the audit, so that would be reasonably into next year. Councillor Spears. Thank you. I have two questions. One for Isabel. Uh, first question. Do you think this is serious enough to go to scrutiny? Because we need to do a full investigation uh, uh, after the pandemic when we had the problem, especially with schools. And that would be my next question to Mr Greenhorn. Uh, there was stuff put in place to make sure that these uh, uh, water facilities were checked. So do you think we should take this to scrutiny um, to fully examine why th this hasn't been carried out for the last few years? And my next question to Mr Greenhorn, I would imagine there's a rigid um, procedure within schools on checking for um, some Legionella, um, where they're so densely populated with young people. Gary, could you answer first, please? I can, thanks. Thanks, convener, and thanks for the, the question, Councillor Spears. Uh, firstly, we do take it seriously uh, in terms of schools. We do have a robust checking system in schools that checks both the, the Legionella in, th in terms of the when the schools are closed through going into effectively flush the taps, flush the pipes, and we also do regular and check checking on the water temperature at both high, high level and low level through the Sentinel taps. I would say that in terms of the, the audit report, as my colleague uh, Mr Ketrick says, we do agree the recommendations and when we looked at the, the incident uh, that, that affected us, it was through staff shortage and we've made steps to remedy that already because we do take it seriously. We learned the lessons over the COVID, we worked successfully over COVID to reopen schools on time and I can give a guarantee that that robust system for Legionella is in place in the school system, albeit there are, are now and again wee blips to staff shortage, but through the actions that Mr Kettrick said, we can overcome them with a more robust system in place to check all properties across all our uh, estate. Thank you, convener. No, that, that's great, and you'll have the records then. There'll be strict Rec record keeping, I would imagine, on that. All schools do do keep records of when the checks are done, Councillor Spears, and we have a central check when we do the the the, the program of flushing over the school holiday period, and that's managed centrally. Thank you, Gary. Um, I believe it's more appropriate for Brian to ask answer your other question, Councillor Spears. Yeah, thanks. It's maybe just. <clears throat> Just to say, the committee has already asked for a report, um, and obviously you, you'll get that in November. It's not out with um, your remit to ask or to refer a report to scrutiny if you think there's an issue, but I think maybe at this point it's a little bit early. I think it's more appropriate for you to call for the report, see what progress, see what the action plan is and what progress has been made, because there's presumably endpoints that will have been met by or should have been met by um, the time the report comes in November. And if you're happy with that, you could always ask for other reports to, to keep on top of this. But at any point, if you're not happy with what you think's been been progressed, you could refer this to scrutiny to ask them to undertake a deeper dive. But I think for the time being, it's maybe just better just to wait for the report in November and just see, see because as Mr. Ketrick says, the the plans in place, the actions have been carried out, so the progress is in hand. I think we're happy with what's been progressed. But we thought this was done two years ago, so we're unhappy that what, what was uh, progressed two years ago hasn't been carried out. That's a concern. Thank you, Councillor Spears. Does anyone else have any questions? Councillor Forrest. Thanks. 
I, I'd like to ask, there are 229 operational buildings. We've sampled five, which is less than two and a half percent of them. Are we satisfied that given Legionella is such a serious thing that we have a large enough sample? Or is that a standard sample? Yeah, I, I can actually answer, answer that one as an order. That's roughly a sample, correct sample size. OK, thank you. But can Isabel just confirm that, please? Yeah, yeah, no problem. We tried to get a, a, a mix of different types of uh, area to look at, different um, services, different um, buildings. So the time that was taken, it, it became more intensive because of the amount of um, paperwork to go through and to check. So ideally, we, yeah, we could we could try and do more, but it's the time constraints and trying to get through all of these. As you know, um, as Paul was saying earlier, there are 21 recommendations. Each of those recommendations, some of them actually have multiple parts. So and they're, they're um, very specific to those those buildings, but they can then carry forward throughout all the buildings. But if we do a bigger sample, you know, we could be, it, it would have taken even longer to do the report. And if you remember rightly, uh, when we came to, with it at the June committee, it was still ongoing then, and that, and it was mainly because of that. It was because it was just taking so long to get through all the paperwork, visit the sites. So yeah, uh, I think five was reasonable in this instance. Thank you for that, Isabel. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions on this part of the report? Move on to the other parts of the report, Councillor Michael John. Thank you, convener. Um, just looking for a bit of clarification really around the IP and, and the, the, the updated guidance, um, which refers to um, particularly to schools um, and the, um, the recovery of debt. Um, firstly, what, what would be that debt? How much is it? And um, how, how is it actually recovered? Come to Gary on this one, please. Okay, thank you, convener. Uh, in terms of the, the last identification of the level of debt within our school sector, it was around £65,000. We did a number of mitigations to try to recover the debt. Some of the debt is caused by the IP system, uh, tr the transition from P7 to S1. So there's a number of uh, informal approaches that schools made to parents to clear up debt. There were some instances where uh, a poverty strategy when we looked at it, those children that had applied for free school meals had incurred some debt up to the point of the application being granted. And we looked at some uh, discretionary changes to the system there to make sure that uh, we accommodated it. So at the moment, we're still uh, probably in the early part of the, the new term, and we're still looking to recover some of the debt. But we've made good progress to let our parents uh, to try to get some of the debt. And I know that certainly in the first two or three weeks of term, a lot of the money that was outstanding at the end of term has has came in. Uh, I'm unable to give an up-to-date position on it. Now I don't have that position, uh, but I can certainly uh, get it if members wish. Okay, um, Gary, maybe out with this committee, it might be worth a conversation about managing that debt. I mean, I appreciate this is an audit, but just about the practicalities um, of that debt and, and those involved. Thank you. Thank you. Council Hannah, do you have anything? Uh, nothing at the moment, thank you. Does anyone else have anything to raise? Convener, the only other thing I would have asked is about um, the, the arrangements with um, West Lothian um, and to wh why, why they were chosen as our, our peer um, to do um, the review and um, just um, whether or not we are content with the work that was done there and we felt that was a fair outcome from that. Thank you, Councillor Michael John. Isabel? 
Yeah, we, we do reciprocal work with West Lothian. It's a historic arrangement that we've had for a number of years. So obviously internal audit is an independent function, so able to then audit every area of the council. Uh, whereas because risk management sits with, with me, it, you know, we can't audit ourselves. So that's why West Lothian come in and, and audit specifically risk for us. We also did the same piece of work for them because they're in exactly the same position as we are. So the, the report was at a time where we were almost transitioning anyway with risk management. We were looking at different options. You'll know yourselves where um, risk has come up quite a number of times and about trying to improve that. So the, the audit came at quite a good time. To, to look at all of that and more or less the recommendations that came out, I think there were about five, um, are around, were around areas they were easy to accept um, being an, on the receiving end of an audit for a change. They were easy to accept because we were more or less doing those things anyway and we were already looking at it. So um, we weren't concerned in any way with what came back and we were already taking action to try and improve what we were doing with risk management. I think one of the things that came out as a bit of a theme was around changing it too much almost, that we had to have a period of not changing and trying to make some improvements and, and stick with them for a while without yeah, continually yeah, trying to tinker. Right. Okay. Councillor Hanna, you anything? Councillor Spears? Yeah, you're saying you have a reciprocal arrangement with West Lothian Council, uh, and this has been on a long term basis. <clears throat> I think you'll have heard the debate, the previous debate regarding the risk management and Legionella. So, do you think this is healthy? And uh, some things have obviously been overlooked. So, Will this go on forever or will other councils come in and audit? <coughs> we, we would choose who we wanted to have that agreement with and it's worked well with West Lothian Council. In terms of your specific question about Legionella, those discussions have already have been happening recently with the corporate management team about where Legionella sits on a risk, corporate risk register and keeping an eye on it going forward um, as a separate risk potentially. Hopefully that answers. Well, it doesn't actually take us anywhere forward because we thought it was a substantial risk to the uh, people that use our facilities. And what we're saying, what I'm saying here is it's obviously been overlooked in the past. Um, Everything's great in retrospect, and I appreciate that, but um, and it will be rectified for the future. But we've been audited by the same group who haven't picked up on that, uh, and that's a concern. West Lothian didn't specifically look at um, what was on our corporate risk register or Legionella either. What they looked at was the processes around how we manage risk and the groups that we've got in place within the council to um, provide all the updates on, on risk. And it looked specifically at the role of the corporate risk management group. So it, it, it didn't in any way look at Legionella. In other words, Councillor Spears, it wasn't within the scope of the audit. Councillor Hannah. Uh, thank you, convener. Can I just have a look at the, the, the question of the complexity of the risk management process? Um, the, the, it, the report refers to some concerns about the complexity of the process. Um, does the Chief Finance Officer accept these concerns and is there plans for the way in which we can improve on that? Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Councillor Hannah. Um, I think I... So, so West Lothian were um, making comment about the amount of change that was being made. And I think... There was change being made, but I think some of that was about trying to continually improve what we do. Um, however, I think we did recognise that 
um, the system that we had in place um, at the time of the audit was a bit too complicated. And we also had the feedback from um, audit committee, for example, when you reviewed the risk reports to say that some of the risk reports were a bit complicated, a bit difficult to understand. So we have been working on, on what we do with that. And we have got some proposals for streamlining and improving the process and just having a bit more clarity about roles and responsibilities. Um, and it will be due to bring a risk update report back to the next audit committee. So we would put some of that uh, report on some of that. What I would say is just um, reiterate the point that Isabel made that once we do that, we recognise in the recommendations in West Lothian and um, in the West Lothian audit report, we need to just give that time to bed in. We need to work with it for 12 months, see how well it works before we would look to change anything again. So um, I think we have a good way forward and we'll be bringing uh, some information back to committee on that. Thank you. Has anyone else got any further questions? I have one uh, and it's very basic. It's the, the Lothian report Terms assurance is satisfactory. Where does that sit with our ratings? So every odd every audit team um, we follow the same types of assurance level. We just call them something different. Sometimes um, some councils have four different assurances, and they range from a comprehensive so right down to a no assurance which you will recognise as one of ours. We have substantial assurance. Their satisfactory is around our substantial assurance. They have one above that which is called um, effective, which is would be like a comprehensive which we don't have. So it sits around our substantial and to note there were it mentions if there were high high risk we didn't have any outcomes that were high risk, so therefore it's at, at, at quite a good level. There were two levels beneath, which would be around our limited and our no assurance, and obviously we, would, we weren't in that category. Thank you. Thank you for that. Do we have any further questions? No? Um, So if I get Brian just to summarise the decision. Thank you, convener. Just if I'm clear, I think the committee have uh, agreed to ask for a follow up report to the next meeting, um, which sets out the action plan for Legionella, showing all the recommendations and the, the progress made to date. Um, and not for the decision, but also just being mindful that depending on the scrutiny of that report, the committee might be minded to refer the matter to scrutiny for further uh, further investigation. But for today, the decision is simply to call for the report. Just double check, have these agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, Brian. If there's no further questions, then I'm happy to call this meeting to a close. <laughs>